Hey, welcome back to a, another Loop Station tutorial. My name is Plague, and today we're going to be talking about one cool trick you can do for every single effect on this device. There are 31 effects on this machine, the MK1. So let's just jump straight into it. The first effect is the filter. What you do is you apply this filter, you can change the rate and that will change the digital pattern. And I'll show you what I mean in a sec. I would just recommend having an EQ or a vocal distortion or a low bit rate lo-fi to help bring the sound out. Or you can have something already recorded. It literally doesn't matter what it is. You can have anything and then it'll change it into a bunch of digital code. <laughs> and changing the rate will change what the pattern is. doesn't matter what it is and like I said you can do a high number like 100 for this step rate and it'll do the same thing the next effect is the phaser you already know my favorite effect is the phaser well one of my favorite things to do with the phaser is to have a step rate of some kind for me, I like to have a step rate of the 16th note and having a rate that's anything less than a 16th note. That's one of my favorite things to do with the phaser. After phaser, we have a flanger. And then you have, again, literally anything you want uh, on recording. And you get this really cool, like crazy sounding flanger. Next up, we have the synth. Now, the synth, what you're going to do is you're going to put the decay at 100 at the start, and then you're going to change it to 99, and it's going to give it this filtering effect almost. And you can also make it stick again by putting it back to 100. Next up we have lo-fi. Lo-fi's cool trick is if we combine the synth with the lo-fi, we can get this sick inward bass kind of sound when you stop or mute a track. It makes this That's cool. Now with the ring mod, you can change the tone of a synth with this. So we have our synth over here and our synth has no decay at all. So it's just gonna be the synth sound. And then we have our ring mod, which our ring mod is gonna be at whatever value you want. This frequency, however, is going to change the note of the synth. So as you can hear, as you can hear it's just making noise. But if I have this, so all I'm doing in the mic is literally anything. I can go da da da, anything. Da, 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 da. 
After ring mod, we have guitar to bass. If you are having trouble having the guitar to bass stand out with lower notes, if you just add an EQ boost to your bass, it'll allow your vocals to actually shine through a lot more. For this example here, I have an EQ. I just have it at plus seven lows and plus five low mids. Everything else is zero. That is just enough to boost for the low end when I do the last note of this sequence. So you can hear my low end a lot more clearly. And that becomes more and more useful the lower your note that you're actually physically doing goes. Next up, we have slow gear. Oh man, what the heck are we going to do with slow gear? Well, we have a cool trick we can do with slow gear. If you want to fade in your effects, you can actually use slow gear to fade in just the effects rather than the track. Check this out. <laughs> Transpose's cool trick is we can use a transpose like a vinyl flick, but with this we have a little bit more control over the vinyl flick than even the vinyl flick. Start at any value, it doesn't matter what it is. Whatever we do to the knob, that will end up sounding like a vinyl flick. <laughs> Oh god, the oh, science has gone too far. So our cool pitch bend trick is you can set the pitch bend to be one thing, whatever whatever the heck you want it to be. And then you can set your transpose to be another note, whatever it is you want it to be. So what this does is this ostensibly gives you three notes to play with while using zero signs and while being in multi-mode simultaneously. Now, you don't, if you don't want three notes to play with, you could just use the two notes by going back and forth between pitch bend and transpose and it just being off for the original note. The robot is actually a strat that I came up with. I'm sure other beatboxers use it as well, but I just find this easier to navigate the menu in the robot without a sequencer. What the trick is, is you memorize the number of clicks rather than the notes themselves. What I mean by this is if you are doing a robot sequence of some kind where you have to shift between the notes, instead of memorizing things like F sharp, to D to E flat, just remember four clicks left and then one click right. So one, two, three, four, and then one right. The reason we do that is because that's one less thing that you have to remember and it's the action that you're telling your hand to do rather than just a tactful search for the letter or the note that you want. After robot, we have vocal distortion. Now with the vocal distortion, we can pair this up with a synth and you can turn a ton of sounds into a guitar.
speaking of vocoder, our next trick is on the vocoder. If you have the vocoder on with your input effect, nothing will end up happening. Well, if you, what you can do is you can have the vocoder on already, and then you start to tr the track to begin the vocoded voice. So like here, for example, I have the vocoder on, just like this, and I have the track muted, and then all I have to do is start this track instead. And now I will have a vocoder. You can hear it that way. And then I can stop this. I don't actually have to turn the vocoder off. I can just turn this on. Another way that you can think of it is every time you push, like let's say something's on one shot, every time you start it, it'll restart the vocoder part. Push me and then it starts shaking until I get optimal satisfaction. And next up is dynamics. Now this trick might actually only work on the MK1 because of how the MK1 handles compression. But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna force the device to compress a track. Now notice this is how the bass normally sounds. And as they're playing both at the same time, neither of them are compressed. However, if I add some dynamics, uh, I'm using a dance compression at plus 20 in this case. I'm just applying it to track one. Basically fading track two in and out to the kicks. So it creates this little bit more punchy effect. And I'm gonna change the level and you'll be able to hear the difference in compression. So the cool trick with the EQ is killing your low mids. Just uh, like something like negative 10 and lower for beatboxing. It'll end up making your low ends of your beatboxing sound more prominent. It's not boosting your lows, but it's making them sound more prominent. So if you look at like the way that the graph would end up looking is you have your lows, say like a plus three to a plus six, whatever, it's up here. And then you have this massive dip at your low mids. And then you have your highs at whatever, and it ends up just making them sound much more prominent because the low mids aren't in the way of the beatboxing. Next, we have Isolator. <clears throat> what the heck can we do with Isolator? Well, we can use this as a mild slicer. I have it on a mid band and a rate of some thing. You have it at depth of whatever works. Doesn't matter, you have your band level at 100 though. And what this will do, if you have a rate, is it'll make it fade that mid band. It'll fade that mid band in and out. <laughs> Stop doing that. After the isolator is the octave. So our cool trick with the octave is the octave sucks, and so we can make it better. <laughs> our octave volume maxes out at 100, which sometimes is not loud enough or prominent enough. What we can do is, if you want it louder, you just have to put on an a EQ and boost the lows, and maybe even the low mids, and now you have a octave boost. And this is especially useful when you're using something like the negative two, this is very, very hard to pick up with the octave at 100 because it's so low. So if you use an EQ to boost that, that'll boost the volume of the octave without boosting the raw signal or raw sound that you're putting in. Pan, I actually use this to test my speakers and test my speaker placement. So when I need to move my speakers around in my studio or I am moving to a new studio, or my speakers are being weird and I need to test them, or a video is being weird and I wanna test that video, or just whatever kind of testing I need to do via, via speakers, 
I will use the pan. In fact, just a couple weeks ago, I used this um, because I was performing for a friend through Skype, and I discovered Skype transmits sound mono. I didn't know that. Well, I used pan to actually test for panning of the speakers on his end. So yeah, you can use your pan to test for your venue. If you're in a new venue, you can use the pan to make sure that your speakers are aligned and that you're getting good sound, sound quality. The tremolo trick is you put a sound on the full volume parts, either by adjusting the rate so then it fits on the full volume parts, or by placing the parts on the full volume parts. And the tremolo will then only affect the background sound and not affect the pieces that you put above it. So now essentially what I've gotten is I have the granular delay clicks. Those are prominent. I have a tremolo on, so it sounds like it's just tremoloing the background, but not tremoloing the granular delay. Well, that's just because I place them where the tremolo isn't hitting. Next, we have a slicer. Oh boy, check this out. That's a fun one. <laughs> now the trick I have with the delay also works with the panning delay. If you want to make the bass thicker, change the time to something else, then back to what it was before. So I use this trick in quite a few tracks. <laughs> Another way to do that is to add a little bit of graininess to the bass to make it a little bit thicker that way too. You can just change it by one, especially if you change it to notes that really fit. The next effect on our list is the panning delay. If we use numbers that are divisible by each other, you can make harmonies with the vocoder. Do numbers like 5, 10, 15, 8, 12, and 24, 2, 4, 6, 8, 12, like those numbers um, will end up making some really good harmonies. So let's try it out.
So we have tape echo next. What we can do is we can use tape echo as the twist effect on the MK2. But if you have an MK1, we can still do that with the tape echo. If you just start with a repeat rate of zero and work your way up, it'll twist its way up in pitch. And if we go down from 100 to zero, it'll twist its way down in pitch. Playground. After tape echo is granular delay. You know that you can make notes, piano notes basically, on this. And we can use this like an oscillator bob, but on the MK1. Well, we can set up a signs and play our loop station like a piano to create whatever it is that we want. <laughs> Next up we have roll. We can use a roll, this is a little niche, but we can use a roll to do a change up in our song. So we can have something started and then we can use the roll to transition to something completely new. Oh, let's try this out. This is gonna be goofy, but we can we can do it with this. <laughs> <laughs> like completely change into a new, new genre. All right, next up is chorus. So the cool trick with the chorus is you can use this to create a less harsh flanger with a rate of four measures and everything else maxed out. So <laughs> And the last of our regular input effects is a reverb. Now the re cool trick with reverb is we can make risers with a reverb. If we just record at a high enough level and we just make any sound, record that sound into a loop and then reverse it, have the reverse on, we can <clears throat> essentially create a riser. Beat repeat. The cool trick with this is this is going to be the new meta. Um, you can essentially create whole new sound if you capture different parts uh, with the beat. I've demonstrated this multiple times with Le Loire. Uh, Ill is another good example. Here's another example by Biscuit. <laughs> As you can see, you can basically create something brand new with the B repeat. 
But we'll move on to the beat shift because this video is getting on long enough. <laughs> the beat shift, you can create your own slicer or your own beat scatter pattern with this just by messing around with the knob here. A bonus tip or a bonus cool strat is it's sometimes easier to create something on beat and then just shift it later on. What I do for a playground is I record this delay and I just shift it later. So now I have the delay recorded, but it's on with the kick. So what I do is I just beat shift it in the pass by an eighth note and then There we go. Boom. Created. The cool trick with the beat scatter is recording drums takes like the most amount of time of most of our tracks that we make. So it'd be really nice to be able to change our drums up in a more significant way. Well, we can do that. I can change this drum setup by doing a beat scatter. I, in this case, I'm using a P2 and a quarter note. And then I can turn that into this. As long as your kicks line up, like that's gonna be the most important part because if they don't, it's gonna sound really off. But if your kicks make sense, go for it. Finally, we have the vinyl flick. The vinyl flick, you can actually, this is a MK2 strat. You can have something recorded on a track or whatever. And if you have it on one shot, every time you push the one shot, it'll also activate the vinyl flick. So then you just take whatever you're recording here on your one shot, and then you bounce it to another track. That's it. That is every single effect on this device uh, and one cool trick that you can do with each one of those. Have fun. Come see what uh, new songs you can incorporate some of these tricks in. And I will see you in the next video.